got to get better at this mic thing. It's not even a show producer, so don't even bitch at me for it being a show producer. I said, we'll get the show started in a couple of minutes. I still have to smoke a morning bowl. I just showed up, you know, the usual, un late, unprepared. I'm stirring my tea with my pen. So let me smoke a bowl and we'll be back in a sec. Sunday. I think my mic is on. I think the show is transmitting or broadcast streaming. That's the adjective I'm looking for. The, the, the show is streaming with sound and video. Ah, it's Sunday morning. It's early. Ah, it's, maybe it's not early. I don't know. Some guy called from Australia last week, New Zealand. So Blah, I'm always amazed. Audio is on point. Listen, that audio thing is a bitch. And I'm telling you, like, I know you guys say I should hire a producer. Or, you know, there's been lots of suggestions about the sound. And you guys are all correct. The problem is, this sort of isn't the permanent space I'm going to be doing. What I'm hoping to do is be able to sort of broadcast live from the store. I'm hoping to turn that little extra room I showed you yesterday into the... Uh, Hey, Ralph, you good dog, bad dog. Oh, I know. I know you want a treat. So I'm hoping to turn that room off to the left right there, this little room we don't use, um, into like a studio where I can have a camera like this and a couple cameras in the store, and I'm going to make that wireless mic work. Now, I know a lot of you tell me you want me to get a mic and you want me to put on a headset because that would solve this problem. I don't need a producer damn it so listen paul xyz you're right i do need one but listen I, I, i'm i'm you guys you wouldn't have a producer in here i mean i still have to learn how to do my job if a producer comes in i'll never learn how to do it but more importantly the producer really isn't the problem the problem is is that i show up and i get high i'm just in here i'm unprepared i get high i'm doing this all week long that's what the problem is. The problem is I show up unprepared. Listen, there's no commercials. I literally smoke bowls and we start talking. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's a producer going to do. Tell me to quit smoking so I'm focused. Next. So. Uh, listen, I... I had a customer come in and ask how to watch this show live. Listen, I'm a network engineer. I'm MCT. I'm MCSE certified. I can teach Microsoft systems people. And I still, I haven't even figured out. I have never watched a live stream, I don't think. Like through YouTube. So I don't even know. Okay, so I've been writing the book and doing this all for like the last six years, right? And so we got the book done. We got all these parts and pieces done, right? We're going to the shows now. I got all these parts and pieces done. 
but I still haven't even finished my advertise my Google advertising account. Like I advertise for vendors, I run commercials nationally. I have to go and update that. I have two more Bushmaster videos I have to make, which you know, it is what it is. It takes a week or two to do them. Um, but listen, it, there's so much going on. So I figure by the time I work out how to do how to how to do all this by the time I work out my responsibilities right and take Ralph to the to the dog park to go potty by the time I figure all of that out I, you know what I mean like I should be golden but until now I really haven't had the free time I mean the last three weeks I finished the great root race three week four weeks ago and so Chuck the, you know my employee he doesn't work the weekends I do so Chuck, you know what I mean? Like Chuck needs a couple days off. So Chuck doesn't work the weekends I do. So that's two days a week for me. Plus, anyway. So four weeks ago, I, I finished the great route race and we tore down the back of the store. Well, actually not quite. I was sitting here the next day. It's always embarrassing to tell this story. I was sitting here the next day after we tore down the, the, the stuff for the videos was still up. <clears throat> I did a show. I mean, you guys saw the show with the great root race and I'm sitting here like Sunday morning and I'm looking at my store and it's just fugly. And you know what I mean? My degree is economics, but they don't really teach you how to run a store. I mean, they teach you buy low, sell high. They teach you what category to put the numbers in. But they don't teach you that the bathroom is for customers and almost not even then. Anyway, so I was looking at my store and I thought to myself, oh, okay, hang on a sec. Hey, 205, good morning. Hey, good morning. Wait, 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 I can't hear you. Okay, so my mic's on. Can you hear me now? Um, you're choppy. Try it one more time. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Good morning. How you doing, Grubba? Good morning. I think I love owed the you show, a... man. Thank you. I think I owed you an answer from yesterday. Seven seven three. Give me a minute. Okay, two oh five. I had one question I wanted to yes, ask sir. you, Grubba. I up? had a, uh, I've been stalling balling, like you call it, and I had one massive thing that came out and the thing is that I want to it's like in the second week and you see I'm using um, hydroponic uh, bloom and I want to know what should I add to it to make it to, to get me the photos I really want to get out of it okay so so what I think I heard you say was you're <coughs> you're in you're in the second week of flower in hydroponics. How much light do you have? Well, right now I got it in uh, about 750. Okay. How big of a space are you in? I got a big space, but she's about five. When I put a, I got a trellis over the top of her. So right now, with that trellis, I she was she had got about six feet tall. So I brought the trellis and bend it down and put it through there and everything. So now she's got a five by five space by herself. And my light is a thousand watt, but I got it dimmed down to seven fifty. Listen, first, I just want to say, <clears throat> I, I appreciate the fact that that you've listened to what I've said over time. And one of the things that I want to point out is, when you're a grower that has a six foot tall plant, asking how to get bigger buds is a one hundred percent legitimate question. When you're a grower with little tiny shitty overwatered crappy little sad plants, that's not the time when you're going to ask when you're going to get bigger bud. So, what I always want what I always go over with you guys, all right, listen. Um listen to the answer. I'm going to I'm going to thanks for the call, dude. It was just the right call. All right. <clears throat> when you're when we're talking about the flowering, we've transitioned from veg to flower, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> 
some of the things that you hear people say is they're switching of nutrients you there's different products you can use on the shelves of my store at different times that you can add to make your buds bigger and there are all sorts of bigger buds stuff right i mean <clears throat> you look at some of these shelves and i probably have let's if i had 100 bottles of product in my store 50 of them would be nutrients 20 of them would be grow bigger buds um 30 of them would be divided up between anything ranging from um, roots or anything else, but 30 of them, you know, grow the plant faster, hormones, enzymes. But for sure, you could take all the nutrients in my store and all the bud boosters. And this is why I'm going to have to change the set because I would literally walk over to that shelf right there and I would show you, hey, look at all these bud boosters. <clears throat> Maybe I just need someone with a camera, like a camera hat to just follow me around and stand there. <laughs> okay, 510, I'll get to your call in a minute. <clears throat> so when we're talking about transitioning into flower, one of the big things that we talked about last week One of the things that we talked about last week was uh, the transition size of buckets and how you veg from, you go from a one to a two or you start in a two into a five or a one to a three. But we were talking about the rule of three <coughs> and how you transfer between buckets. So let's say you have a four week veg and an eight week flower like the caller did. 510, give me a few minutes. So let's say we have a four week veg and eight week flower or two weeks into flower. Well, two weeks into flower, we should have just started seeing the hairs come up. We're just starting to know that it's female. I mean, it's clearly obvious that it's female at this point. Um, it might take a little longer. It might happen a little quicker. But, I mean, even if it took a few days longer, like you're vegging with 24-7. When you veg with 24-7 instead of 18-6, plants tend to take longer to go into transition. They also start to grow roots because they grow roots at night. So even if you've got a big bucket full of roots at the end of veg, the reality is everybody gets a big bucket of roots at the end of veg if you do it right and you're in the right size bucket. The only difference between a 24-hour veg and an 18-hour veg is 24 hours worth of veg literally spent 33% more on electricity, right? Because if you're doing 18 and you add six hours, that's one third of 18, so you're at... 33% more electricity to get the same bucket full of roots. So there's no beating mother nature, right? I mean, you're spending 33% more, but things don't happen faster. Okay. So <clears throat> you go from your one into your three. And if you're doing soil, remember what we said. We had said that if you have one gallon worth of soil, and at the end of a four week veg, you've consumed all the nutrients in the soil. Then when you go into a three gallon or a five gallon bucket, there will be there will be two or four more gallons of new soil with new nutrients. It's tough. You know, people talk about cocoa and how stuff cal and mag and how there's a cal mag deficiency. You're going to get that in any healthy garden. So really what we're talking about here is that buffer. When you go from a one to a three, you got that new two gallons. So when you go into flower, you don't necessarily need to feed right away, right? Because the, And when you go into flower, it's going to be two weeks before you really start to see it anyway. So you've got two weeks almost worth of veg nutrients. Like, let me describe to you the nightmare scenario. Nightmare scenario is you transplant from a one to a three into flower. You go from whatever dumbass veg light you were using to like a thousand watt light, 24 inches away. And you feed flower nutrients and you transplanted it into more soil. And you decided to add whatever it is that's on the shelf of the shit. You know what I mean? You've got all this stuff going on. I mean, the plant doesn't know. It doesn't know it's in flower. It's a plant. It takes, today's problem started last week. If you change the lights today, it won't show up until next week. It's a plant. When you do too much at once, you start to 
fuck her up with attention, right? Because it's a plant. Five minutes to you is 12 weeks to her. So you really got to leave these things alone. So here's a guy who's got a six foot plant. Boom, pulls it into a five by five wide trellis. In fact, in fact, I will, I got, <laughs> just to keep, I just asked this one guy to keep me informed because we were using his pictures. I mean, he's just, it, it's nice because he had some problems and then he fixed them. And uh, this is the guy who, this is the guy uh, who we went over how he had uh, six plants and then I had him increase the plant count. Okay, so he sent me another picture and this is what his garden looks like now. <laughs> I just want to point out that if you want to get the weight that your garden has to be fold like this. So imagine, okay, so this is this picture, right? This is how many ever plants he had. I, I think it was nine plants. Okay. Now what, what the caller did was the caller actually grew something a little more along the lines of this. The collar actually grew something more along the lines of this, where he had three plants per light in this picture. So the collar grows this one big ass plant, or he didn't, he just grows six foot plant, could be two, I suppose, but it's probably going to be one like this. So he grew a big plant, right? I mean, this is, I mean, he said it was a four week veg, two week flower. So I, I, I don't know that, but he's got a six foot plant and they grow like that when you do this right. And they grow that fast when you do this right. So this guy grows a six foot plant, pulls it into, um, pulls it into a trellis. So again, so it looks more something like this. Uh, well, actually, let's let's use the same. Hang on a second. Let me use, just use the same picture, and it looks more like it looks more like this, right? So he's got something more like this. He's got the light above it, and and so here's a caller, and I immediately complimented on him on this because here's a caller who who had all the details he was right he wasn't at 100 percent light he was two weeks into flower and at 75 percent and he didn't have any problems my, my shit looks like this it's beanstalk it's overwatered. it's too thin lights too close <clears throat> he had the words to describe the situation and he had some quantifiable terms and quantifiable amounts to think about in terms of how much light, how much space, how much yield. So I get a caller like this, and this is one of those rare instances where I tell you everything comes together. And when the caller has a question about how to make buds bigger, I, I have an answer. So I'll go, let me show you. <clears throat> Okay, I think I got this. All right, Hannah meter, 90 bucks. Hannah digital PPM meter, 90 bucks. This is a Titan CO2 controller. I think it's new. I just don't have the entire box. 160 bucks for a Titan CO2. Now this one is preset. You can't, uh, you can't adjust it to less than 1500. It is what it is. 
I got a deal. I told you guys all about the Nanolux. This one's a dual 600 dimmable with one power cord out the back. No, that's not the power cord. With one power cord out the back. And uh, yeah, you can have that thing for like 140 if you buy the hoods. Okay. So my observation about the question was, what do you add for bigger buds? Okay. <clears throat> Now that you're in a position to ask the question about what do you get for bigger buds, we should probably go over the transition. So you go from veg to flower. You had a four week veg. I can't imagine you did a six foot plant in a, th in a one gallon. So we're gonna give you a three gallon bucket and we transplant into a 10 because you got a monster fucking plant. <clears throat> okay, you got a monster plant, what are we gonna do? Well, one of those things you've always heard is that the plant stores almost all of the nitrogen that wants in veg that it's gonna use through flower, 80%. So you're still gonna feed a little bit of nitrogen. So what are we talking about? We're talking about nitrogen and the plants want more PK during flower. Um, I had, uh, who was it yesterday? Ah, somebody, ah, perfect. Somebody hooked me up with some pictures from my book on a slide, on a little image, because apparently I, I don't even have time to tab my book. So here's the diamond, right? So there's this spot where you go from N. You can see in veg, uh, you're doing more N than PK, and in flower, you're doing more PK than N. But <clears throat> even though you flip the switch here, you don't flip the nutrient switch yet. I mean, the plant doesn't even know it's flower, right? I mean, it's one day, whatever it is tomorrow when it wakes up, it was last night when it went to sleep. So all I'm suggesting is when we talk about that transition time, a couple of things are happening. We're not increasing the light, <clears throat> especially if the caller shrinks his canopy and widens it up, the density of the canopy, the thickness of it decreases. And you have to pay attention if it decreases because We've all seen this picture where, uh, where light falls off with distance, right? But the same thing goes with, the same thing goes with, with width is that you got to have the right amount of canopy to match that yield. You can't put a thousand watt light over 400 watt space unless it's eight feet. Anyway, so now we got a guy who's got good looking buds, the right type of canopy. Now we're transitioning into flower. So we transition into flower. Page 81, the grow book. We transition into flower. 862, I'll get to you in a little bit. We transition into flower. And here it is. So we, we whatever we fed with last week, you gotta remember there's more nutrients in the media now. We went from a three to a 10. If we were watering every two days in a three, if we go up six gallons, and we're gonna be watering every six days eight days so we're going to be watering every eight days so now the nutrient schedule has to adjust because the watering schedule has to adjust for instance if you were watering every time and feeding every other time suddenly you'll find yourself feeding every two weeks so there's this relationship between light and and water and feeding and and all of this right so now that you've transitioned into flour you're going to change literally two things one you're going to change bucket size and the light schedule you will not increase the light if anything if you stripped your plants down or you pulled them into a trellis you might leave the light the same wattage but move it further away i'm never in favor of decreasing watts with healthy plants once they get used to it they get used to it so if you're at 600 watts with a big ass plant and you you know with three and a half feet of canopy penetration and you pull off a half foot at the bottom and then you take three feet and you stretch it out so it's like you know two feet or one and a half foot deep canopy then i'm suggesting that you might make sure the light's further away like you wouldn't pull the canopy down and then bring the light closer that would be too much right <clears throat> so when you go from veg to flower we have this transition time and nutrients and i know all the nutrients and everybody has all this schedule but i'm telling you it doesn't fucking matter because the plant wakes up tomorrow knowing the same thing it did when it went to sleep last night 
And nothing changes on a plant. And nothing changes on a plant between today and tomorrow because it's a plant. 12 weeks. I mean, if you think about it, if you got a four week root, even in the red, including the red cups, then you got a four week veg, then you got an eight week flower, this plant's four months old. Four months old by the time you chop it down. I mean, that's 16 weeks. You've got to think about it in terms of that. Okay. So now you're moving into, you know, you moved into flower. So we have this transition time of what could be up to two weeks. Okay, you start to see the buds, but that's not really bud builder time. That's onset. That's flower onset. And there are products like node stackers. So your nodes get closer and you tend to get those longer arm buds. But that's also a factor of topping. Because indoors, you're really never going to get a three foot arm. It's really not how you grow indoors. Okay, if you look at high times and you watch those like East Coast Philly grows where they take the umbrella hoods and they'll twist them into a closet where they open up their window and there's three feet of snow outside and they got like a six by six closet, you know, five by five closet with a hood twisted in there. They grow that one crazy plant with those super long arms. Okay, if you're in the East Coast growing in the closet, midwinter, open up the window, thousand watt umbrella hood, you can grow those big ass arms. But for most people indoors, this is a coordinated, timed effort. This is a product production versus cost input. And if it takes you three more weeks to get the same yield, then you lost by, well, let's say if it took you 12 weeks and now you're up to 15, it's 25% longer. Just saying. So these are, these are the trade-offs. Now, you're, you're into two weeks, the, you've got them topped well, right? Every hole, every trellis hole has a top in it. You're organized. You, you, you've had about this much top in every trellis hole. You have those three tops spaced at the bottom. Then you have those three right there that are coming out of the top. And then you'll notice over the next few weeks of flower, it'll keep, plant's gonna get another, it's gonna double, man. So the plant doubles, but the nodes can't get as far apart anymore just by the virtue that she's in flower the nodes won't elongate as much. Are there tricks like, like PGR, like plant growth regulators? Yeah, there's dimethazoline and paclobutrazole. These are the two things that are in, oh man, there's, there was gravity and then there was uh, phospholode. Dimetha and so when you go to Walmart and you look at those plants and they say five, seven, nine, and you come back two weeks later and they're not bigger, why? Because when they left the nursery, wherever Walmart buys them, they sprayed them with a PGR, a plant growth regulator. So they don't grow in Walmart. So they don't stretch in Walmart. They get some consistency out of it. They don't use much and they just spray it or the water with a tiny amount. Gravity was the brand name that was known back then. And now there was Bushmaster and Gravity. Anyway, so you got lots of tops on your plant, right? The tops are coming up. You don't top the individual branches. You do lollipop the bottoms. Now the tops come up, you got a couple down here, and now the plant's gonna start to stretch, and you're gonna end up with the nodes that end up, right? So the trick is to get those long arm buds with as many nodes as close as possible. Usually the trick is to start with a 10 or 12 inch branch in each trellis top, and then, you know, right at the start of flower, maybe eight, depends how big and the light and the, you know, a couple of factors, but those are the things that you're going for. Now, these three nodes are clearly flowering. The next three, you've got three more nodes now that are sort of coming up, you know, the, the you know what I mean? And now the bottom node will drop off and the top will keep growing and the bottom node will drop off. But the growth rate is gonna slow because the plant's gonna double in size, but it's gonna double in size over the next six weeks. Just like it was a four week veg, two weeks into flower, now it's going to be four more weeks in flower, like two weeks into finish. And that's if you don't go nine weeks. If you go nine weeks, you have six on the early side and seven on the late side. So you tend to start to see the, the vertical growth rate of the plant slow down. And that's the clue that she's really into flower now. Now remember, this works because this guy was growing healthy plants. Six foot monsters. That's why I can tell you this. Because otherwise I'd have to tell you to, you know, raise the light, lower the PPM, stop watering so much, add microbes. So here's a guy who's knocking it out of the park. So the question becomes is what do you feed it? So we're talking about PK, right? They say PKs for flowers, roots and fruits. So 
we're going to have to start to add some people just going to say k some people are going to tell you pk but here are the pk boosters um not this one not this one almost that one but here are the okay what's the thing about powders the thing about powders is if you if you do the npk rating of a powder like this new this um uh flora cool bloom liquid is a 0 10 10 it has an npk rating of 20 if we add up the n and the p and the k we can determine concentration by 20 by by adding them up right so the npk rating we know that 50 percent is p and 50 percent is k so if we add 200 ppm of this then we know 125 came from p and 125 came from k so in our heads we know p and k because when you look at the ingredients there's nothing else okay when we look at this oh by the way let me just say these are the best products ever they will blow your shit up I, I don't know which ones they are yet i haven't looked at them but whatever these are that i'm using as examples they are the best products on the market and there's no reason you should think anything other than that about these products they are fantastic and the best products on the market so this powder is a 950 10. it has an npk rating of 69 so if if let's just say one teaspoon of this was 200 then one teaspoon of this okay so it's 20 69 200 400 600 700 ppm but that's what makes powdered nutrients so fantastic right you literally can like pull a couple grains out and get hundreds of ppm they're so packed full of energy that's why I tell you facilities grow with a 1000 and a 01010. They literally have two bags right there. Okay, now, you're in the second week of flower, so we know we're going to be adding PK. One of the things that you have to worry about is the relationship, is the relationship between how much how much you're feeding so here this is a flower nutrient profile you can see there's less n than pk one of the things i always like to bring to your attention is the fact that this what you don't want to do is you don't want to add a liquid pk and a powdered pk because they're both PK, right? So if you add 200 ppm of this and 200 ppm of this, you could have picked 400 ppm of either one of these. Now, I know the vendors are going to make the argument that they're... Hydroponics. Yes. Yes, I'm streaming today. Okay, but I'm not gonna take it on this phone. And I'm streaming right now. And I'm streaming right now. Perfect. All right, so you're gonna have to let me go because I am on, I am live at the moment. I do appreciate it, thank you. Okay, did anybody else hear the store phone ring? So, direct line phone number that's always fun being the grow boss and i love those things where like hey take just one second to answer this question and you give me like you know what i mean like two and a half three paragraphs of preface and i'm like absolutely not i don't even get involved in answering anything that's not scheduled to go through but you gotta remember there's a million of you 202 of you and one grow boss and that's just on the show at the moment so the thing is pks are pks now this is Fox Farm, fantastic product, knocks it out of the park, best product ever. So what you need to know is that Fox Farm thinks that there's three parts to flowering, that open sesame, that blue, beastie blooms, and then cha-ching, which is their finish, right? Okay, so the manufacturers are telling us there's three sections, open, bud swell, and finish. And they're right about that. So. Fox Farm smartly makes all three products. Now, Advanced Nutrients smartly makes all three products with 30 different labels. 
because that's what advanced nutrient does and this little company does a little one bottle something and and big up powders uh 3323 um big butt is the liquid version it's a 013 so powdered is a 1535 so one times 15 is 15 three times 15 three times 15 is 45 so these are almost the same but hey you know advanced nutrients I'll show you something. Advanced Nutrients makes these bottles of Sensi Bloom and Sensi Cocoa and Sensi Cocoa Bloom. And I just want to point out that I've been trying to track these because I'm trying to keep them on my shelf, right? So I'm trying to work through these bottles. And I'll tell you, they are so smart. What they do is they continually change the labels. The problem is this Sensi Bloom is a 400 and this Sensi Part A and this Sensi Bloom is a 300 and then next time it'll be 400 and then it'll be 300 and i mean they change literally the the nitrogen and it because it's the same product and yet they change the nitrogen i mean here's a nutrient that all they do is go from a three to four to a three to a four to a three to a four to a three to a four and change the labels and i think it's brilliant i mean i put out a book with a new cover and it sells so i mean i'm not i'm just saying that you know they're all minerals on the same recipe and they change the recipes based on the different vendors but they all come from the same i mean you all seen the machine in dr seuss right woo, brr, bing, woo, brr, bing, and a little puff of smoke comes giant puff of smoke comes out a little drop of liquid into a bottle you know what i mean and then just put a different label on the bottle so one liquid comes out blue when I mean, you saw me with that 40 nutrient mixing video i mean you can prepare them in all sorts of different ways convertible right soft top hard top full top down dually four-wheeler two-wheeler three-wheeler i mean you, they come in all different ways essentially it's a combustion burning motor you know what i mean so you're moving into flour this is where you're headed these are the bud boosters they're all the same for the most part i, I mean maybe there's a little bit difference between the products that go in them but what we're talking about is pk and i don't care if you add a liquid pk which is easier to add because it's liquid. All you have to do is get, you know what I mean? Like you take a three mil measuring cup, pull it up, put it into a gallon jug, put your meter into it, and then you just write on the cap. Oh, 135 ppm per teaspoon. And now you know forever. Listen, if you've got a 200 watt light, you, you almost can't even use a powder. I mean, if you got a 200 watt light, you're never really going to, you got a CFL or some silly little thing, you're never really going to be over 200 PPM. I mean, this stuff's so strong. Where are we going with this? And if they're all the same, this is way more convenient than a powder anyway, because what happens if the powder doesn't melt all the way? And then you use the water and you pour it in, the powder sits on top and it dissolves later. That's a pretty good way to do nutrient buildup. So when we're talking about going into flour, we're talking about a PK boost. Now, when we talk about a PK boost, what we're talking about is that Beastie Bloom section where after two weeks to about six weeks into flour, so there's about a four week bud builder section in there. And then, they, then we flip up the light all the way. Some people do a flush if you fed too much. Some people just don't feed anymore. So you move into that part of the, that aspect of uh, of the grow right so you've got that four weeks where we're talking pk and what we, what i want you to know is that all these pks is the, are the same in fact one of the big things that you heard me you've heard me say in the past is that these two products equal this product so this product is calmag right so uh oh sorry these two products equal this product this is a 054. If we doubled that number, we would end up with a, a 0108. A 0108 is pretty friggin' close to a 01010, right? I mean, 18, PK, 18 NPK rating, 28 NPK rating in the same PK category. Okay. 
If we had a 200 ppm of this, 100 ppm would come from P, 100 would come from K. If we had a 200 ppm of this, 110 would come from P, 90 would come from K. So pretty close, right? Now, this product right here is a 054, and if you look on the back, it says, oh, mag and sulfur plus P and K. If we look at this product, it says mag and sulfur. And if we look at this product, it says P and K. So these two products equal this product. That's what I'm trying to say. These two products equal this product in twice the strength, because this would actually be a 01011. This would actually be a 01011 versus a 054. So it's nine versus 21 in total NPK. And that's just concentration. What's in them is about the same. These two products used in the appropriate concentration make that pro make make this product. Okay. So when I tell you guys that the manufacturers have it right in a lot of ways, it's true. Because you look at Fox Farm and they do a really good job of explaining what the three sections are. That was how I learned what the three sections are. We're reading about Fox Farm. It's you know it's open bud swell and and finish with the sugar so what i'm suggesting is is that that once you see those three nodes three nodes you know the three start to come up the plant vertical growth slow down you're really now in that bud building phase bud building phase 0 10 10 for about four weeks now what are we talking about because let's just say you got a thousand watt light you've got 10 plants we're in week two we're in week four flower now let's say with a four week veg we're at week eight so we're probably going to be at 800 ppm okay so you've got 800 ppm to water with this week now last week before we started adding the pk it was 800 ppm of base nutrients so we had a one part nutrient fill up 800 ppm we used three tablespoons into a gallon we got 800 ppm <clears throat> Okay, so we got 800 ppm of nutrients last time. So we're going to use 800, 900 ppm. The question is, are you going to use the same amount of PK that you were using and you're going to add this on top of it? Or are you going to decrease some of the nitrogen so you have even more PK? Because if you keep it the same and you just add 100 PK, then you would just add a little more pk but if you decrease the nitrogen let's say you can based on your nutrient then you'd be adding a lot more pk but let's say you have 800 you want 900 i would suggest that you add 100 of this but let's say you want to use this pk too you're not going to go up to a thousand so now you're going to cut your nutrient down to 700 what you've now essentially done is added two pks and that's what i'm showing you right here See, in this circle, the PKs all come, the PKs all come from the same source. One, one, whatever it is, there's one of them. But that's why I make fun of you guys with, the, with your shit shelves, with all the stuff you have on it. Go out there and look. Now, I'm not suggesting that you use this product in place of this one, because this mag sulfur is part of the finishing and i don't tell you to use the mag sulfur now when we say finishing this would be like cha-ching that's the ripener so now we're talking about ripening the buds building the sugars getting the crystals okay in terms of that this is going to be the magic because what we're talking about is the whole time that the leaves have been sending the sugar that they create from photosynthesis down to the roots to be stored as starch. Now, starch is sugar stored for the long term. So think of starch like a potato. You can't eat a potato raw. A cow can eat a potato. A horse can eat a potato. But people have to cook starch. Why? Because it's sugar packed for long term storage and it's unavailable to us. But when you add sulfur to it, think about it like a peach on a tree. Hard like an apple, not enjoyable. Starch. Then it gets broken down into sugar. Falls on the ground, sugar becomes alcohol, the wasps show up and you get those drunk wasps. Okay. 
Everything knows what cannabis is. Everything knows what alcohol is. Mankind has made all sorts of laws about, and I understand all that, but I just want to be clear. Everything on the cannabis, know, everything on the planet knows what cannabis and ethyl alcohol is. So what we're talking about is a conversion of starch into sugar. If we're talking about a conversion of starch into sugar, sulfur gets used up in that process. That's why halfway through flour, when your buds are ripe, and you can start to smell the polyethylenes, the many ethyl fragrances and scents. If you didn't heat up your plant with too much light, that comes off of them. You can sort of smell that there's a difference in the air as these things start to ripen, especially during the last two weeks. It is a, it's a thing. I can feel it in my face because my face blows up from the allergies from whatever they put in the air. Anyway, so about four weeks into flower, you switch from CalMag calcium magnesium to magnesium sulfur that's the deal so you're looking for a cal mag to mag sulfur okay so that's what you guys are headed for so while the buds are building you're going to be adding some pk now as the plants get bigger you're going to be adding more nutrients so what you might consider doing is halting your nutrients and just slipping in 100 pk Right, you just put in 100 ppm of a PK liquid or a PK powder, because for all I know, you could have 100 lights with six foot plants underneath them, right? <clears throat> 12 bugs a year, they say. So, that's the relationship. If we agree that they all come from the same place, minerals all come from the periodic table of elements and overseas. You know what I mean? If we all agree that the Potash Corporation, literally, okay. <laughs> okay, so I used to do this little private fund, an, an investment fund, um, just coming out of college. Uh, Potash Corp, just... <laughs> And so one of the things that I used to do, I used to invest in and know about was nutrients because, listen, they're trying to put fish off season, fish farms. I mean, it's pretty fucked up, right? You can't even put a fish farm because of Fukushima. So there's, this is the potash court. And, and so what are we talking about here? This is a potash supplier. These guys sell nutrients. If you just look up the chain, eventually, all of the fast food restaurants end up with Heinz ketchup or that other, no, no, catsup. They, they end up with one or the other, the catsup or the ketchup, right? They end up with one or the other, no Pepsi, Coke, Coke only, no Pepsi. So <laughs> at some point it, it, it comes on a ship from overseas. You know what I'm saying? Like N is N, P is P, K is K. That's this situation. This is the Potash Corp. These guys, I mean, they're dude, they're big. When we talk about like the Potash Corp and and when we look at the stocks, I mean, you see 1798 there, but you got to talk about the the just the bajillions of shares, 5,700 employees, um, and so listen the same way i shop for my store i get my distributor catalog and i'm like oh this please 12 of this two of these four of these eight of these six of these it looks just like you know in caddyshack hey i'll take two of these and four of these and eight of these ah, that's an ugly cap i'll take two of those so they all go shop at the same pro shop like remember there are 1500 hydro stores 33 percent are chain stores now it used to be one percent about Seven years ago, it started to grow. Five years ago, it's 3%. 33% are chain stores. In fact, oh man, I have a great graphic. I have such a great graphic. I am going to show you a great, give me one sec. Good dog, but you're not going outside right now. Okay, 
So basically, I just sent myself this graphic from the other store computer just because um, I had a vendor come in yesterday to tell me all sorts of stuff. And I was like, I don't think you understand what it is you're saying. Now, I'm the guy who ships magazines to every hydro store. I'm the guy who, uh, I'm the guy who, uh, you know what I mean, tracks the hydro stores. So let's open up this graphic. And these guys, this is, this is a graphic of the Las Vegas Strip with the red line. So there's two hydro stores up here. We just had two major stores open up right here. One move to right here. Um, there are two major stores owned by the same guy, literally three miles apart. And these are all 6,000 square foot warehouses, um, right? 1,200 square foot store, 900 square feet up front. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not, I got 16 pallets out back. It's insane. So I'm just suggesting that these guys are all lined up on the Las Vegas Strip. You can see the bulk of them are right here. My dumbass store is way out over here. Uh, and they're all, now two of these shops are chains out of other states. Both of them have the express purpose of opening up giant hydro stores in all states that are going legal. Personally, I think this is an insane business strategy. I know why they think it's a good idea, but the guy who owns the two hydro stores already owns a facility too. So that facility is not buying and he's the biggest in town. Listen, facilities buy on 3%. I would never sell to a facility. They're like, hey, they're coming here. Can I get an estimate? Absolutely not. I won't even touch them. So this is my relationship in, in terms of business with the other stores. Um, I'm friends with some of the other stores. We trade equipment. Like I bring stuff, you know what I mean? Like I try to balance out me and my friend's stores because I get so much stuff. I try to divide it up with them and help them a little bit because we don't compete in kind of, when we play the same game, but we don't compete. You know what I mean? Like my store sells books. We do the videos. There's so much more going on. Um, I will say, however, that I'm stepping up my game specifically because I think we got West Coast or something like that some sort of hydro store from California. Um, I forget which one, Green Coast, Green Coast. I, so I just found out this week that they moved in and they're doing all sorts of live demos and they got all sorts of stuff. Now, listen, five years ago when I, we went from eight, six stores to 15. Store six was me, seven and eight was me. When all the facilities closed, they opened up hydro stores and we went from eight to 15 hydro stores in six months but business didn't change. So we're starting to see this again. Now, is business changing? I don't know. I will say my sales are up since I've, you know, put more inventory in the store. Um, things are better here in the store in terms of that. But I, I will also say that it's not like I doubled my sales. Like I did, uh, we did a 3G and a 1200 and a 400 in the last five or six days, but you know, uh, that isn't anything special. I mean, we used to do 3,500 a day in this business when cannabis was 3,500 a pound. I mean, we'd have four pallets sometimes twice a week. It was crazy. Okay. So these guys open up these big stores and I wonder because you come out of California and when we do the math, there are 1500 hydro stores in the United States. Um, 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 I think even, I think even I can show you this. This is uh, everyhydrostore.com. Um, so this is everyhydrostore.com. This is my website. I keep track of it because, well, it's, I mean, I might as well, right? What I would like to point out is that 40% of all of the stores in the United States are in California. I have heard from the vendors that 50% of all business comes out of California. So if we do a quick run of math on that, I don't understand ever why vendors, like I sell this contact list, right? So I sell a list because I know, um, so I do this website 
if you guys, I don't know if you guys care, but this is Garden Science Magazine where I sell to stores and I sell to vendor advertising. So I've got these mailing lists, right? I sell them to the vendors and they don't only, you know, they send out an email and I'm like, hey, they get a bounce back rate. They have no idea what they're doing. And I'm like, listen, why wouldn't you isolate in the Excel spreadsheet I send you? Why wouldn't you isolate the stores in California the chain stores in California, the the main store, which I have in my list, and call them first. I mean, if 40% of the stores do 50% of the business, that's 49 states doing 50% of the business. Each state does 1% of the total business of all the hydro business done in the United States. That's some shit when you know the numbers, right? So you put it all together, you think about it like that, and suddenly you're like, dude, the hydro business is just like any other business. It has a trajectory, just like growing cannabis. It has a trajectory, just like laundry detergent. Paper towels are my favorite example. If you go back to 1970 and you add up how many times Brawny has given you 50% more, twice as many, and new, bigger, new, whatever it is, it would be a paper towel roll that, that went from here to the moon. How many times they've done 50%? How are paper towel rolls still the same size? Oh my God, that drives me just fucking bonkers. <laughs> it's 50% bigger than 1964 when our first paper towel roll came out with two paper towels. What number are they referencing when they say it's 50% more? It's crazy. I mean, I can use statistics for anything. Ah, I mean... The best episode was South Park measuring the... Anyway, so, I mean, there's a whole formula for measuring it, right? So, <clears throat> oh my God. Okay, Sin City Grower. You just commented that Viper Spectra isn't bad, but Mezzi has more red. Let me tell you, Viper Spectra just sent me an LED without warning, asking me to test it. Silly little LED. To test it and I was like don't know who you are didn't get a spread price sheet know nothing about you so no dude there is they're Mars I and mean, they're probably Mars with a different name on it if Mars was smart Mars would compete with itself think about it GH bought Botanicare nope sorry Hawthorne bought GH and Botanicare right like literally I think they produce it in Virginia or something they got the the Dr. Seuss machine bing Big puff of smoke, little drop of GH comes out, boom. But I think they bottle them in the same plant now, right? I mean, change the bottle, change the label, same minerals off the periodic table of elements. It's a lot of shit, right? And the question was just, when do you use it? <laughs> so I'm just saying that a lot of people, if you don't overfeed, a lot of people do a flush with the sweet with the mag sulfur. You just run some mag sulfur through it and then just leave the plant alone for the rest of the time. So you're going to be adding what? Like a, like a, there are things that shorten the plant and, and transition her into flower faster as long as she's healthy. So those are things like bud blood from advanced nutrients. You know what I mean? I've sold a lot of bud blood over the years and never hear complaints from good growers with bud blood so and there are a lot of good products out there that do this stuff i'm just saying there are also a lot of products out there that do the same thing from different companies right you just look at the toyota camry and the chevy something and the ford something else <laughs> if you were sitting on the inside in the back seat, you might not even know what car you were in. I'm just suggesting that it's ubiquitous once you understand what the base fundamentals are, that these things are ubiquitous. So all you have to do is find the appropriate way to use them. And again, these are the best products right here on the market. Always use these products. Whatever these products are that I'm showing you, always use these products. They're the best products on the market. And of course, because I haven't had the backdrop, I mean, let's talk about green pad, right? I mean, you watch the great root race video you watch the, let's see. You watch the Great Root Race video. Now, I just uploaded episode five, the conclusion, Great Root Race. 
And listen, I gotta say of the whole thing. Oh, I gotta say of the whole thing. I think this is the tray that won. Check this out. Watch this for a second. So, it turns out that, uh, well, I'm not even going to tell you what Trey 12 was. You can just watch the video. Here is the video. Here is the video. All right, dude. That was such a fun thing, comparing all those products. <clears throat> all right. Okay, so I was going to tell you my embarrassing story. So a few months ago, so we were talking earlier about like the store, right? Like I'm the grow boss. I have this hydro store and you can go to business school, but they don't teach you that like owning a retail store is like growing cannabis. You have to be on point all the time, every day, all the time. You can't have a screw up. I screwed up yesterday. I literally sold a $420 deal. I think I made 20 bucks on the whole thing because when it came time to hand them stuff, I didn't hand him the, I handed him more than what I agreed on because I was so busy doing so many things. I'm just saying they don't, it's hard if you lose focus for even one second in this game, somebody gets hurt or you lose money. So I, I, I'm sitting in the store. It's the end of the great route race. All the stuff is in the back. I'm sitting here at my table. I'm doing the webcast and I'm looking at my store and you know, the new stores are starting to open up. And they're big stores and it's starting to pick up again. And I look at my store and for a long time, I bragged about how we had the used equipment in the store and it was kind of dingy and meh. And I didn't have anything. I was a minimum store, like just a minimum that you needed to do. And I'm sitting here like the day after I uploaded, I finished all of the great root race videos. I didn't upload, I didn't post them all, but they were all uploaded. And I was like, you know what? It's time to fall in love with my store again. So fall in love with the store, build all this stuff the last few weeks. I'm just saying it's been progressing. I mean, we've had more viewers on this show today and let me thank everybody. I appreciate. I mean, it's kind of interesting what happens in the world. I mean, in the hydroponic world, from a business perspective, from a guy with business experience who, listen, I didn't grow up playing cowboys and hydro store guy. I assure you this was not this was not, I didn't grow up playing cowboys and hydro store guy, right? Got hurt being a paramedic, hated being a nurse. Um, the kind of nurse that I was, like a floor nurse, hated being a nurse. But then I had an opportunity for the hydro store, so we took it. And then I wrote the books based on the questions and the people that came in the store. So, no, you can't buy me a new shirt. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know why I wear this shirt and I always wear the same shirt? Because I don't have to think about it. It's like a uniform. The show is ubiquitous. It almost doesn't matter who I am. I just show up and give you the information. Like, you know what I mean? Like, plus, I just take this off at the end of the hour and put it in the pile the next week. And if I had to get a new shirt, suddenly there would be laundry and I would have to prepare for the show. And so, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, so it ain't gonna happen. Listen, man, if you were doing this, you would do the same thing because, uh, no one comes here and does my, you know, you know what I mean? I have to do more laundry. It's not going to happen. Anyway, so that's why I stopped wearing the white shirts because the elbows were getting brown from the seat. So now I just throw a black shirt on underneath. Listen, my dumb ass is in the back of a hydro store. Okay, so. <clears throat> you know what I mean? My store is minimum it doesn't have the inventory it's awful like literally like i think about a year ago i gave one of the other stores i traded them seven truckloads truck truckloads big truckloads full of accumulated shit over the years for a couple of g's of store inventory spread out over six months then i replaced all that with great inventory but the store still didn't look right we're making videos um i'll show you something um 
<clears throat> if you look at the when you look at these videos the tile in these videos might look awful familiar to you tile in the video um image of my store hmm i will tell you that that for four months last sometime previously uh -huh, we had those plants i was making these videos from in the store and we'd film at night and then during the day we would turn the plants to the back wall and people would come in and they'd be like oh what's in the tent what's in the tent i'm a legitimate question right i mean of course they're facing the back wall which is weird so we started piling tables in front of the plants people were climbing on the tables to look in the tents we started piling trash bags all around it and people were like you're going out of business and I guess I just sort of like fell in the rope and the store became like, like, like the Goodwill store, like that ammunition store. You know what I mean? Like you just walk through the aisles all packed in there like this. So, all right. So I had a vendor come in about four months ago and he's like, oh shit, you're the grow boss. Listen, it's just my dumb ass and you and Chuck. And when they come in, sometimes you can see them recognize me and they're like, oh, huh, I've seen you. <gasps> Hey, you're here in Henderson, Las Vegas. Okay. So he's, and he, he, he does that. And then he looks around the store. The guy looks around the store and says, huh. I would have thought it would have been a little more from the grow boss. Right. And I threw up in my mouth a little bit. The timing was such that Chuck was standing right there. <laughs> he looks at me. 510, good morning. What can I do for you? Hello? Hey, 510, good morning. Hi, how you doing, girl boss? Uh, hey, you gotta turn your to... computer down. Yeah, I just took it down. Okay. Yeah, I had a quick question, man. I watch a lot of your shows, and like you said, all girls have the same problems, but my problem is a little bit different. Well, it's not even actually a problem. I'm doing pretty good. I just have a problem about the great debate about pruning and flowers. Okay. Like currently, currently I do day 21 and day 45, but I just want to know your opinion on cutting off leaves basically in flower to get more light to the buds. Do you believe you shouldn't touch the leaves or it's okay to trim them? Like, you know, what is your opinion on that? I never really hear you talk much about it. Okay. All right. I appreciate the call. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. So here's my opinion on trimming. I believe that all of it works when appropriate. I don't believe that all of it works on every plant. I don't believe that all of it works on every strain, but I do believe that there are some ways that are better than other ways. So what I would think is, um, okay, so let's say you grow something that looks like, uh, let's say you grow something like, uh, Yes, sir. I'm sorry, my call is disconnected. No, 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 no. I, I, I said thank you, and I was going to answer your call um, and show okay. you some pictures. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. yes, sir. Um, let's see. So let's just use, because I, I, like, uh, I just like Thomas Picks. So let's open up... Uh, let's just put this into perspective because what i try to remind you guys is you can always ask me a question but let's just quantify what we're talking about now this is five by five or four by four or five by five with six plants this is the same garden this is the same garden with okay i think i opened up i opened up the wrong picture um this is the same garden okay this is the same garden with nine plants so this garden nope this garden this garden versus this garden three more plants same space okay so now we're in the zone now we have the right amount of canopy 
to start flowering. And then when we look at the same picture sideways, nope, that's six plants. Then when we look at the nine plants, I don't think that's it. Oh, let's see, is this one it? Okay, so this is the nine plants side. Nope, this is six plants again. Um, do I have a canopy picture of this, of it sideways? Okay, nope, that's something else. Okay, awesome. Okay, just go back to whatever this was. Six plants, not what I want. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so we go to nine plants this way. <clears throat> now what we're talking about is how efficient can we turn this eight or 10 inch canopy? How efficiently can we turn this into a two foot bud? Because at some point, the lower leaves aren't even going to be getting light toward the end of flower. One of the other things to consider is what is this, what does a similar garden look like later in flower? And in terms of that, let's look at this picture. Now in this picture, if you can get your plants on point, then what we're talking about is look at these two tops back here. <clears throat> um, I can tell you that these, once this thing gets leveled off about 20 days into it, 21 days into it, there really isn't, you only sort of got to make it around there that once. Um, you can start, you know what I mean? And then you get that trellis on it, that first trellis on it. So you can still move all the plants around, get them really even, get, and then put the trellis on it. And then, I mean, th this is a pretty dead nuts canopy for not going around too far. So <clears throat> at this point now, you really wouldn't do anything. I mean, <sighs> do taking off some of the leaves so the sugar leaves convert, as long as you can convert all the light that the plant is hitting, getting then some leaves are too much some people go extreme they take off all the leaves how that could affect a plant what has to happen is you have to grow it perfectly three times then when you grow it perfectly three times you have to try each method on your strain to evaluate it because remember if it might make it better it can also keep it the same or you could get less only one out of those three scenarios gets you more so you watch the Bushmaster videos and he, he spends hours a day doing the leaves, but there's no appreciable later when you go back and look at those outdoor plants. I mean, he was out there for hours a day for weeks at a time until his arms were tired and hanging. And you can see later when the buds are being trimmed, like taken down from the plants, there was no appreciable difference. So maybe was it that strain? It, it, all things are possible. What we're talking about here is what is the possibility of a specific outcome and a specific outcome. It, it's tough for me to know from here because I think you should be taking a lot of the leaves. I really think like, but, but then when you look at this picture, when you look at this picture, this is that one that I show you, uh, five by 10 space, one plant per square. I mean, it'd be tough to get under there. So I'm just saying sometimes you can't really get in there. And you know, you look at all those tops and you go, listen, what's worth more? Getting one more top and one more square or pulling off some leaves. Now in a home grow, I showed, I always show you guys, I always love this one. This is, I just always love, this is, uh, Oh, nope, not this one. Um, nope, that was a oh Barnes. There's uh, I am Barnes. Ah, good. I've been working on trying to find out. Ah, oh, Brian. <laughs> Dude, I had some guy send me an email this week. He was so happy with the selfie next to his plant. And he's all, grow boss, I've been listening to you, I've been listening to you, I've been listening to you, I'm just, I love my plant. And you can use me as a testimonial on your TV show, on your show. 
And I looked at the plant, and it wasn't this one. It was worse. It never even got this far. At least this is a burnt bud. But this was this tiny hit with too many lights and too many nutrients plant. Because some people, some people hear me say, don't overwater. Some people hear me say, don't overfeed. And some people hear me say, don't put your light too close. Some people hear me say, don't put your light too close and don't overwater. Some people hear me say, don't put your light too close and don't overfeed. Some people even hear me say, don't overwater and don't overfeed. But there are very few people who on their first effort hear me say, don't put the light too close, don't overfeed, and don't overwater. Usually you guys don't hear me say all three things until after you kill your shit. That's why I tell you, kill it the first time, you see it grow the second time, boom. In the third time, you're starting to win. Doesn't matter what equipment you buy. If you don't know how to grow, you gotta get the feel, gotta get the parameters. That's why I totaled the car 12 days after I got it. Meh. Anyway. So the guy took a picture, it looked some, something similar to this. And I was like, yeah, no, I thank you. Oh, thank you so much for reaching out to the grow boss. I always appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that you watch my videos. However, I think no on the offer of, of using you as a testimonial. I, I, I think you're so far, you know what I mean? Like, thank you so much, you know, super funny. And he said, well, he's in a return that says, well, we'll just have to see. Okay, you can try to prove me wrong. I suppose. It, it, listen, don't care. Even if you prove me wrong, don't care. Because the reality is, this doesn't work until everything is right. And at any point, if you have a problem, you are going to pay 20% minimally to the yield gods. Remember, if you have OCD, optimal crop disease, you have to understand that, uh, that you're gonna kill your plants with too much attention. If you have OCD, optimal crop disease, and you're in the no, 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 picking at and poking at your plants, you know what I mean? You just, you're never, it, it, that's not how this works. Okay, so I got the vendor come in, make fun of my store. I'm sitting in the back of my store, customers come in, and I feel like the dirty underwear store. Bleh. Oh, male dirty underwear store. <laughs> <coughs> so, that was literally, you guys have been watching the store go by. So I know you guys call with questions, but a lot of you guys tell me that you like the store and the industry stories as well and what's going on. So, you know, I try to include you in terms of, in terms of stuff like, listen, I run a business and that was one of the things that they taught me to do was how to evaluate. I mean, uh, that was what they teach you. I mean, that's the whole point, right? They teach you how to evaluate, um, Evaluate the business scenario going forward now, you know, what your competition is, all of this stuff. They teach you how to assimilate all of those. Dude, what happened to the picture? They teach you how to assimilate all of those things um, into making a decision, and which is great. So I, I know I am specifically trained on how to, on how to evaluate situations. That's why, oh my God. Okay, give me, give me the picture. Okay, download. Plus my background. I mean, we talk about my backgrounds, cars, guns, computers, medical. I'm a trained diagnostician. I don't care what the problem is. I am immediately aware of all conditions. That's, I mean, everybody has their thing. That's mine. And I happen to be able to put it into pictures and words. And so that's what I, all I do is capitalize on my talent, right? I literally fell out of an ambulance into a hydro store. Bazam. Immediately, what did I notice? I noticed that the questions didn't match the answers. So all I'm suggesting is there's this logical breakdown in any system. And if we can identify the components we can work the system. I mean, Neo did it in the matrix just because that's not real. Doesn't mean we can't do it here in what is, is probably the real world. I would just, 
I, I hope is the real world. You, you feel me? You know what I mean? You know how I feel about the government and all the nonsense and all, everything going on. So you feel me? All right. Let me. Okay. <laughs> and the Fukushima shit and and the welfare and the no and the disaster for national health care. Whoa. Okay, there was a couple calls that were coming through. So you guys want to call back. I'll take a couple calls. I just felt like bitching and showing you guys pictures about uh about how the walls are closing in. I mean, that's a hell of a thing. I mean, if you look at what I did, I came into the hydro business and instead of, well, I opened up three stores and wrote a book, but the three stores didn't work out. So we went with the hydro book and that works out pretty well, but it's outside of what most people do. So you can look at my stories and it's outside the curve as well. All right, let's take a call. 210, good morning. Hey, go boss. How's it going? Excellent. Hey, got a question. Um, um, <clears throat> got a question. Um, after after curing uh, uh, my bud around seven days uh, or so, um, you know the twig, twigs are snapping good. Um, then the bud goes in the cure jars for around two three weeks. But <clears throat> what I noticed is um, smoking bud that I grew. And letting it cure for let's say two months in the jars versus a bud that I brought from a plug that I got from Cali, you know, where it gets it from wherever. The bud is it it's it seems it's it's it looks different, it feels different. It feels like mine is more fluffy, uh theirs is more hard and it smells good. Is there a difference between like how long does curing take and how long does it does it take to actually get to that that you know um, that dense that 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 denseness of it or the the touch or, or the, it, it you know is there a difference? <clears throat> okay, I think I understand what your question is. So let me try it like this. I would like to substitute. The, I would like to define the word curing, and I would like to add the word drying. So there's two components to this. Okay. There's drying. And there's curing Canada hydroponics. Yes, this is Grow Boss live. No. Okay, how come I never talk about par value? Tell you what I'll do. I'll talk about that next. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on a sec. I'll talk about par value next, right after this call. I won't take another one. I'll answer you, but I'm not going to do it on this phone. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. So where the fuck is my number posted? Which bathroom wall, which hydro store has my cell phone? Son of a bitch. Right? <laughs> oh no. That one called the yeah. store. No, I heard that one ring in the store. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's talk about what you're asking. And then I'm going to talk about par value. In fact, I'm going to write it down because I've been smoking all morning. Okay. <clears throat> it's 10 20 so we still got time for some questions all right so cool. we're talking about what i would like to talk about is the drying and the curing and i like to use tomatoes from mexico as an example because walmart loves mexico tomatoes those little romas when they get picked there's a couple of things that happen they turn into more sugar they bloom they ripen they finish if they picked ripe tomatoes in mexico they would be smushed and rotten by the time they got here right so there's this process that yeah. goes through with ethylene where the tomatoes all ripen over time okay but you're not looking to dry them out that's the thing so what you've done is you've essentially taken a wet flower and you've assigned the word curing that's the process of a of something maturing chemical process of maturity whether you talk about some you know they cure as they get older you know they cement cures as it in that case maybe there it might have more of the it might have a more of a water aspect to it however in this particular case water is in three parts of the plant 
and you don't get the density until the intracellular water moves into the extracellular space and here's how it works you pull the bud off the plant you just got the stalk you're holding the bud boom there's water inside the cells inside the stems and socks and there's water inside the intracellular space so the first thing that you put it in a dry rack you hang it upside down the first thing that happens is the yeah. water in the intracellular space between the cells evaporates that's what silica does silica keeps the cell wall strong so the water can't get out just like i tell you once your plants has a lot of roots it traps that water in there so they have their own defense mm -hmm. mechanism now the water from the stems so now you you put it in a jar and at 24 hours the water from the stems starts to move into the space okay or you might have cut the stems off at this point now the water in the in the inside the cell has to move to outside the cell then the water outside the cell in the intracellular space has to leave the plant when the water leaves the cell and moves into the intracellular space that's when the bud really shrinks and you can see that happen when you take a bud that you dried for two days and then it seems like it's dry but you try to kind of smoke it and it goes out you know it doesn't really burn yeah if you take a bud like that yeah, it's like it's still wet yes it is the water is still right if you take that bud and you cut off the branch with the bud on it so you just have the one bud and you throw it in an ashtray mm -hmm. over the next 24 to 48 hours that bud will shrink and condense as the cells dehydrate it think of it like lucy the mummy i mean she was like what like four and a half feet tall in life she was four foot like two or something when they found her but she was also flatter but she was still the essential shape you know however twisted remember if you're gonna die sitting somewhere die somewhere no die die cool you know what i mean like do something don't be just twisted if you're gonna freeze so that's what i'm saying is you got to wait till that last bit of moisture moves out of the intracellular space <clears throat> which means the extracellular has to evaporate everything in the sticks and stems has to evaporate the water in the intracellular mm -hmm. space moves into the extracellular space and that's when it happens all right yeah i get it um it just it just seems like um it, it, it seems like uh, the the longer the cure goes or the longer it's in jars that the better it, it smells and the better it smokes um now is that is that is that true or is that just something that i feel okay. or i'm thinking now we're talking about the word curing i just defined the word drying and now we're talking about long-term storage what we're talking about is drying and then curing and clearly if you dry uh -huh. it wrong and you get them too wet you can get mold rot bud rot but once you sort of get into the curing phase that's when you get the jars with the okay hang on a sec i'll show you i'll show you i haven't forgot part i'll show you Don't forget, I've got all this used equipment at the store, right? $160 new half box CO2 controller and a dual 600 Nanolux. And I've got some 1,000 watt Nanoluxes and 600 watt used Nanoluxes and uh, Solus Techs. All right. See, this is why I need a bigger space. That's why I need a dedicated space. Oh, yeah. These guys are the best. <laughs> okay so this is one of those curing jars these are those humidity packs that you see these ones are boost there's boveda there's all sorts basically it's diaper gel that has like can hold 
this is 55%, so this could hold 45% more water. You know those things you put around your neck that you soak with water and then you flip over, they hold the water? That's what's in here, it's diaper gel. Um, this is not the same silica stuff that you find in like the desiccant that comes in medication. That's, a, that's something that's hydroscopic. It pretty much only takes on water. These things are meant to stay about here. Now this is 55%. They make 62 and a couple of different ones. At about 55%, your bud will burn nicely, but it won't be too dry. <clears throat> it won't get that crack into pieces that, it won't get that crack into pieces dusty like this gets. Because that sort of gets harsh. Yeah. So, so what we're looking for is somewhere between 55 and that 62%. I, I, I don't care which one. I mean, people buy them both from me. A jar like this yeah. is going to want about a size like this. If properly dried, it would go into a curing jar. That's what I mean by this. Once it's dried, it would go into here. Now, it's tough to know an exact moisture. It's not like you have a humidor at a cigar place, which I suppose will have to be the next thing, is our bud is yeah. 57%. Well, what, I'm, what I usually do is I usually, uh, I usually use the jar and then with the, with the humidifier uh, gauge in there and I put the gauge inside with the with the, with the, the Vita pack. Um, but the thing is, uh, it seems like the, the bud's still still crispy. Like I mean, it, it you know it's still kind of fluffy. So when when you when you grind it, it's super. It looks really really nice. It smells real good. It still looks wet, but like to the touch, it's still crispy. Now I'm wondering if I still need curing time to where it's not crispy to the touch. You see what I'm you see what I'm getting at? No, because because crispy to the touch is a function of humidity, not quality. If we're talking about the longer oh. the cure, the better the quality, which is reasonable. I don't know how much it's valuable, like a little more cure, a lot more cure. I mean, I smoke cannabis every day. You really can't tell which butt I'm smoking. So what I am suggesting is this, that if it grinds up well and you can smoke a joint that goes out like a cigarette or maybe a mm -hmm. little longer, then you're in yeah. the right humidity. That's that 52 okay, to 62 good. percent so but it shouldn't dust up it should chunk up like if you squeeze it it shouldn't really hold together now at that point what we're talking about is we have to ask how much yield you're getting per light for instance let's say you have a little too much canopy or you're growing a haze these things can affect density because afghanis well they grow in Afghanistan, which is the desert, and it's hot. And outside uh -huh. desert plants like mesquite here in Vegas, they tend to be very oily, to and thorny to protect their uh, to protect their moisture. So, if you got to ask yourself, if you're growing like a haze or something, you might, or like an orange hair, you know, like a red hair, you may never get that density of a good Afghan. Um, nice. this this dude brought me some afghan yesterday i mean it's pretty dark in color like when you roll it over it's pretty dense on the side but it's an afghan it's got that afghan listen i don't pretend to know which one of 200 og afghan cali east west water ocean front dude i don't pretend to know which one of those it is but i will say that it's uh it's you know it's afghani i mean that's what they're known for that dark oily heavy you know versus sativa which is light airy so in terms of that now a good grow where everything went well the difference between a dense bud and a light bud would be one of genetics so ta-da you sir listen i appreciate the call i got to get on to par but you sir were the first caller who's Ever I answered genetics because until everything gets there who knows like you grow haze it's not as dense you know what I'm saying like you know you grow outside it's a little maybe maybe a little quite not as dense it's not a defining factor of the bud I had a customer come in the 3g a customer comes in and 
Been to all the hydro stores, happened to cross mine on the way to a Craigslist deal. Sits down and we start talking about size and space. So I literally went in the back, grabbed a bud, put one bud in this jar, put one bud in another jar and brought out the bag. And I said, tell me about them. And he goes, hey, this one's indoors and this one's outdoors. And I'm like, uh, uh, literally they just all came out of the same bag, man. So that was when they just bought their equipment from me, which is awesome, right? Okay, guy wants to talk about par. Here's why I don't talk about par. Because I don't, I don't need to. Don't give a fuck about par. Don't care which, and I want to be very clear about this. I don't care which fucking light you use. I don't care what fucking spectrum you use. I don't care how much fucking money you spent on your lights. The reality is, the reality is, I'll show you the reality right now for as much as I make fun of it. Right? This is why I just couldn't care less. Here is a CFL grow. Let's take a look. I mean, let's just take a look. Dude, bunch of plants, bunch of CFLs, bunch of buds. Look at that bud. Look at that bud. Now, I don't tell you not to use CFLs because, because, it, it, because the bud sucks. I tell you because when you look at this canopy, I mean, as long as you're going to grow in this canopy, why wouldn't you fill up every top? And then you look at the amount of work it takes. Wait, wait, I'm just trying to find the one picture. Uh, uh, just the one. Oh, my God. I'm just going to have to let it roll. Oh, my God. Look at all the holes. Listen, those buds are small. They're dense. The leaves look like shit from too much light because he didn't have enough plant. I've never seen this video before. But when I look at it, listen, if he had a top in every hole, he would have done so much better. Where's all the tops in those holes on the right? Boom, but you wouldn't know that bud from a thousand watt. And this is a shitty grow. Okay, there it is. There it is. Wait, wait, wait. Where's my mouse? Bah! Look at all those CFLs. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, congratulations to, uh, listen, congratulations to this guy. This is not, I don't mean this in any type of, uh, hang on a sec. Let me, apparently I lost, uh, let me get back on my, Let's see. Okay, so I'm still streaming. Okay. All right. This is okay. So this is this is that video at uh Okay, so video at 1.30. Ah, so I switch over here. Okay, so all I'm suggesting is that this video here, I mean, listen, he's got lights all the way to the end, so there might as well be buds. And then when we look at this guy's buds, you know, look, man, he's got buds. You would never know. This is why I don't give a fuck, fuck about par. Because you can grow bud outside. And the reality is, outdoor bud is worth half of what indoor bud is. And if you grow outdoors, that's great. But if you're an LED company that tells me how awesome your lights are, because you mimic the sun, then I just want to point out that you're mimicking a light that's worth half of an indoor light. So, when they say indoor bud is worth more than outdoor, did they say what light indoor bud is worth more than? No. And listen, all fucking buds the same. The guy who called me, all fucking bud is the same. Once you get to a certain level, everybody in the pro is the same. Is there one standout in the crowd? Hell yeah. But you look at Major League Baseball, what? There's, I, I don't really know. But there's Judge. Judge hit it out. I mean, you know what I mean? There's like one or two standouts. There's one or two standouts. All I'm saying is when you look at football, everybody isn't a winner. There's as many winners as there are standouts. Maybe there's two or three on a dream team, like Chicago. Maybe there's something like that. But in terms of that, I mean, bitching at me about not growing because I hate growing because it's slow and painful is like bitching at a sportscaster who doesn't play anymore because he's sportscasting. He got, you know what I mean? Like I'm too old for that game. 
it just doesn't interest me now. It's legal now. So in, in terms of the legality game and going to a big facility, maybe that would be something different. But this is what I do, right? This is my niche. So you want to talk about par. The fuck do I care? Everybody tells you par. Listen, you can't even get the gas mileage they put on the window of a, the Honda that I bought. You couldn't even get the gas mileage they promised me. So first off, you choose par. I have other people that talk about lumens. Then there are people that talk about lumens are for humans. Then there are people that talk about par. Then there are people that talk about they get the light wand and they hold it under and 45 to 65,000 par, man, your plant should be at. Listen, there are people that look at you and say humans need 2,000, people need 2,000 calories a day. Babies are humans. Babies are people. You can't give a baby 2,000 calories a day. We know what happens when you do that. So all I'm saying is, soon as you, when it comes to growing cannabis, soon as you are the type of person that micro focuses on those types of questions, you're off the charts for growing cannabis. Because the reality is, that's like you telling me 1500 RPM. Oh, you should be at 1500 to 3500 RPM. It's a pretty big range, ain't it? And it's not true because sometimes you need to smoke tires a little bit and got to get up to 4,900, got to drop. Sometimes, I'm just saying, they give you a range for you to play in. What is the range? Okay, so 45,000 to 65,000 is the range. That's great. So now what we're talking about is this LED right here. Let's say this LED is 400 watts. Let's say that T5, oh, you guys have seen me do this so many times before. Let's say that T5 right there is 400 watts. Dude, that T5 is two feet by four feet. That's eight square feet. This light is one by one. If they're both 400 watts, that's eight times brighter. And not only is it eight times brighter, it lights up one eighth the plant. Who the fuck cares about par? I don't even know if par fits in that equation. All I know is the basics is this. If you want your motor to last, if you want your boat motor to last more than one season, don't run it past 3,100. Stay in the widest part from both edges. Whatever you see is the closest two edges. Stay right between them. Don't, the, the more you push it, the less you get. And that has nothing to do with par. That has nothing to do with lumens. That has nothing to do with which light you grow with. I don't give a fuck which light you buy because all cannabis is 99% the same. Now you look at dogs and you go, listen, their genetics are like 99% the same. But dogs as a species have the widest range of size, shape, and diversity. For the same genetics, nothing has a greater diversity than dogs, I, I think anyway. So I'm just suggesting that cannabis has nowhere near that diversity. Because frankly, there's Rotoralis, Sativa, and and indica right so that's yeah that's why i tell par that's my discussion on par hey 410 what do you think about what i think about par uh i don't know i think it's all kind of relative to whatever you're trying to achieve and i mean it's kind of like you said it's all the same shit really you know depends on what you think <laughs> it's kind of like well what do you want to achieve what do you think is better and you know working out not killing I don't know I don't even have an opinion on that okay. honestly what's your question sir I was gonna ask about using Epsom salts as a way to get mag sulfate um, because I'm finishing flour and I think that using cow mag at this point is giving it's just like not what I need like you said right. so how like you would use this so is product. it possible to use you that? would use this product it's flora nectar that is the cheapest mag oh, okay. sulfur mag sulfur product now you can oh, use sulfur Epsom okay salt. You can use Epsom salt, but here's what I'm going to tell you. I had a caller yesterday tell me that they have medical grade nutrients, psychonutrients, advertises what? medical grade. So where did you get your Epsom salt, sir? The medical grade nutrient store, or do you just use it from the regular store? So sorry, what was the um, product you said again just now? Floor nectar. And it's not just floor nectar. Floor nectar. Everybody makes a mag sulfur. Botanicare Care makes sweet. Yeah, I tried $29. to find it. I tried to find it on Humboldt's Magnum website, but they have from, so many products it's hard to find. Right. Magnum from from uh, Emerald Harvest. Magnum uh, 
that makes uh, Purple Max and uh, Snowstorm. Those guys, Eel River, those guys have a product called Magnum, which is like 25 bucks. Um, um, Botanicare, ha I'm, Advanced has Bud Candy, Bud Factor X, Sensi Mag. I mean, Botanicare, I mean, Advanced, of all the manufacturers, nobody puts Mag in more products than Advanced Nutrients. And for that, I say good fucking job. Because what's the number one problem in a healthy garden? Not enough mag. So when you guys ask me awesome. about, when you guys ask me about, hey, thanks for the call. When you guys ask me about Epsom salt, I always tell you, listen, this bottle's 20 bucks. They're all 20 something bucks. Whatever nutrient line you thought was the best, your nutrient line has a mag sulfur. Remember, the plants want cow mag until halfway through flower, and then they want mag sulfur. Okay, we got... Dude, I'm just so, I just, hang on a second, we're just going to have to, I didn't see anything. we're just going to have, look at this for a sec, we're just going to have to look at that for a sec. Yeah, listen, it's less light, it's less yield. And he didn't even fill up the whole canopy. And, you know, he did an okay job. Uh, really, if he filled up the whole canopy, what would we say? We'd say, ah, uh, the buds probably wouldn't get as baked. He'd have more buds, that's for sure. So I'm just suggesting that those are the, those are the kinds of things that uh, we're looking for. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter. So when you call and you ask about like the spectrum or you call and you ask about par 863. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good boss. Hey, I'm doing hey, good. Listen. Hey, listen, I got a question about pH. Okay. All right. I, I, what I try to do is I'm, I'm growing DWC and I try to stick pretty much with, you know, the guidelines of the pH range or, you know, hydroponics. But it seems like sometimes um, when, when my pH creeps a little higher than was recommended in, you know, most scenarios, you know, it seems like the plants pray a little bit better when that pH get closer towards mm, the high fives, mid sixes. <coughs> so I don't really understand. I try to keep it around five, eight to sixes, you know, but it just seems like once it get creeps up towards 6.5, it, it just seems like it's just praying. It's like, it's like the plant is like, it, it likes it so much better. You know what I'm saying? I'm, what's your opinion on that? Okay, let me ask you this. How big are your mm -hmm. plants, dude? Uh, well, I'm growing in a small space, and they're probably between 24 and 36 inches. How big is your bucket? Uh, I got them. I'm got them in a uh, uh, one in, a one and a half gallon DWC with in a uh, three and a half inch net pot. How long is your veg? My veg was three weeks because I has I have it in not three. I'm sorry, two and a half, two two about two and a half weeks because I have it in a real small space with an uh, a four hundred uh, watt um, metal highlight. How far away is the light? I got them 18 inches away. That is really, really, really close. So, I yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't. I don't have it on full power. It's a. It's a conversion. So I have it around two, two fifty. I have it half. You know, about about. Uh, I believe it's like thirty percent. I don't have it all the way. You know, full capacity. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So let me make this observation. I, I put a picture up, and this is that nutrient thing we've all seen, where some things get absorbed better at some PPMs and pHs, and oh, okay. so this is that new, this is that thing we've all seen. This is that picture that the nutrient companies use to freak you out. 
But listen, <laughs> you said you had a magnesium problem at 5'5", five, five, at 5'8". Five, this is saying that mm -hmm. magnesium is 7'5", in the 7 to 8'5 range. So how about this? How about we look at what are the total PPMs that you're using? So, what total? Oh, okay. What total PPMs are you at? Probably like three and a half, three hundred, three, three, three hundred fifty. Okay. Are you using RO water? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. But it's not. It's not from a system. I go like to 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 the uh, local uh, Walgreens at the corner because it's right there, and I just get it out of the little glacier machine. I check it and it comes in at about one or two ppm. So I kind of, you know, go off that. Okay. So far, I'm liking it. Now tell me how you make up. What's your 350 ppm? What's in it? Uh, first, I start off with a little advanced nutrients. I add my silica first. The rhino skin, probably that, probably like one, uh, one, uh, uh, one milliliter. And then I'll probably put a little uh, one milliliter of um, uh, CalMag, uh, General Hydroponics CalMag. And then I'll, I'll use uh, A and B, pH Perfect, even though I don't really I don't really care about the pH Perfect. It's given to me, so I just use it, you know, it works okay. Um, and that's about it, a little voodoo juice, you know, and that's about it. Then, then a week later, then I water, you know, water, and then I feed again. And I don't okay. necessarily raise the pH every time I feed. I, I I I try to you know study the plant, see what see what the plant's telling me. You know. Okay, so what I would suggest then is the if you're going to shoot for 350 ppm and you're in DWC, it should be 350 ppm or somewhere from 275 to 400 all the time. Okay. So it should be that all the time. Okay. I mean, whatever circulating through should always be circulating through. Um, the next component is plants dump ions. The roots dump ions in exchange for other ions. So they're always changing the pH. So you're always going to have this range and the pH is always going to be rising. That's why the refill solution. So let's say you make 10 gallons of 350 ppm you put eight gallons into the buckets, you have two gallons in the refill, and you add two more gallons of zero RO water. Your refill water will be 50% the same, 50% the PPM, but the same ratio of NPK. So as the PPM rises and the water gets drunk, drank, consumed, then you're going to get lower PPM water that comes in and will lower the PPM to keep it somewhere between 275 and 4. You always want it on the little bit lower side. Okay. Yes. So now you're in now we're talking about if the plants keep changing, let's say the plants keep changing it to 6 and you want it at 55, five, you would make the res water like 5. And then as the 5 came in, with the 175 ppm it would lower the ph and it would lower the ppms that's one way to keep them uh -oh. adjusted okay but okay. the problem that i hear actually is this when when we look at i don't let me i have a picture i think let me see um let me see if i have um, no. Okay. So, all right. So I, I have a, I have a good answer for you. Okay. So, sorry, I'm super high. I'm super high and I just totally forgot what you just asked me. So I'm going to smoke. <laughs> all right. Um, so you're going to change the pH, you're going to keep the water. All I'm going to suggest is that when you look at like the nutrient charts, oh, not this one, you want to see this one. When <coughs> so 
So the calculations are over here on page, well, they're in the back of the book anyway. What I always tell you guys is there's a calculation that gives you total PPM, how many should be from nutrients, and how many B should be from supplements. And what I tell you is, the sicker the plant, the lower the nutrients, the greater the supplements. So in this case, what you have is a 350 ppm cap. With a 350 ppm cap, and silica doesn't add ppm, with a 350 ppm cap and a shortage of mag, one of the things I would do is I would add 200 ppm CalMag and then whatever else would be nutrients. I would start with more CalMag. That's why CalMag is the number one selling bottle in my hydro store because it's the, it's the base. If you get zero ppm water, you will want to add 100, 200 ppm CalMag and then consider that zero. Then add whatever nutrient you want for two reasons. One, my Vegas water is almost 500 ppm. I'm sure 200 of that is CalMag. I have no idea what the rest of it is though. And there are places where PPM is 100 and 150. So you don't even have to think about it. You could just use that water directly until there's a problem. But when you do RO water and you have zero to 30 PPM to start with, the first thing you're going to do, depending on plant size, is add 100 to 200 and later even 300. Baseline PPM CalMag, consider that zero and then move on from there. So that's okay. where you're at. You've got to solve the problem first. And if you're not going to increase total PPM, then you're going to have to decrease the nutrients and increase the solution. In your case, the solution is CalMag. See what I'm saying? And back that light up because that light's too close. Ah, I just wanted to slip that in at the end because I know you weren't going to believe me. Listen, I totally appreciate the call. It's 11.50. Now it's time to say goodbye. I think I've got a customer. Let's see. Let's see if he looks like a cash customer. Walk next door, walk next door. Well, uh, hopefully the uh, place next door is doing some business. And they'll, uh, they'll, uh, Everyone that shows up in the parking lot will be over there, and I can just sit here and chill with you guys. Ah, smoke cannabis instead of dealing with customers. Yes. So before we start Project Grow House, and I am super into that. Listen, I know, I know, but I can't do anything but, but, uh, but finish up the store get the little grow boss stage. But I'll tell you, if you guys can think of something, see, like normally, if I had like a little stage, somebody called about Big Bud, blah, 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 blah. I would just go grab three off the shelf and mix some nutrients for you right in front of you and show you how to use all three. And we'd figure out what the PPM is. So I'm thinking about building like a little station. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just a little station with like a little tray where I can fill up a gallon of water and we can mix some water up. Um, a little table where we can talk from. Like uh, a green screen I can put videos on. So I have a little bit of playroom. Like I still haven't ever watched anybody else's cannabis shows. I mean, I suppose they have lots of good ideas too. Yeah, I've just been so busy. So I'm always wondering what you guys think, uh, you know, something where we could turn on a trimmer and use a trimmer and throw some bud in a trimmer and do something like that. See, I always try to shy away from that shit because anybody can show you a trimmer, huh? Like anybody can throw a pound into a trimmer. I can sit here and show you somebody else's video about a pound and a trimmer and we can talk about that. So I'm always hesitant to go too far, but <clears throat> oh yeah no commercial yeah although I'll tell you I probably should have commercials for my potty break 
breaks. My potty breaks. What? Better than any YouTuber. Dude, Rock and Roll 420. Better than any YouTuber doing cannabis I have viewed. I appreciate that. That's why I don't I don't usually look at what anybody else is doing because if you look at what everybody else is doing, then you're going to put your hydro store right where everybody else's hydro store is. And I know that's a theme and that's good because they open up giant warehouses and they write hydroponics on the back wall that faces the freeway. And it's super smart. It really is. It really is pretty super smart. That was just never what my hydro store was going to be. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of a stage so we can actually mix nutrients so I could show you a little more in the store. Um, Pedro, es trimmer bueno. My wife is a great trimmer. Dude, Paul XYZ, you're super lucky because what are the two complaints good growers have? Plants get too close to the light. Wives hate trimming. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, P. Jammer, are you, you have carpenter tools for a stage, let you intern. Okay, I don't even know what that means. Do you live in Vegas? I'm in. Where the fuck do you put the live chat on the, anyway. Okay, so I still have lots of plants. Thank you, thanks for your advice. Came close many times. Oh, dude, that Barnes is back guy. I haven't even had time to go through his pictures. I just glanced at him and didn't coordinate, didn't get anything ready for the show. That dude's on Grow Diaries. He kills it, too. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm in the circle now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know who you guys are. You want to know the favorite thing about being a paramedic? Treat them and street them. I don't even get to know you. Didn't know your names or anything. 414, I don't want to argue par anymore today. So, you have your opinion. I have mine. I, I'm super pleased. I think you're right and I'm wrong. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, um, yeah, good growers have two problems. Girlfriends ain't trimming. Plants got too close to the light. Um, but I'm nobody's, hi, Rebecca from, Rebecca, good to, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, so listen, I, I don't, listen, if, listen, P Jammer. I need some construction. I'm hiring a construction guy to come in and make this stage. And he's going to come in and I need these shelves behind me. I got to finish the store. Listen, on the chore list is finish the store, finish the two Bushmaster videos. Yeah, that's Project Grow. Oh, two trade shows that I have to do this year and Project Grow House. So, oh, you know what would be great? You know what would be great is if I took three of my videos and I took 30 seconds from each shit. Even if I just did a voiceover, if I just had a 90 second commercial that I could just run for my potty breaks, think about how organized I would be. If I could have run just three 90 second commercials, I'm like, here, watch this. And you could just watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, there's one more call. All right, all right, listen, it's always dangerous doing one more call at the end of a good show. 385, what can I do for you, sir? Yeah, I just want to say that uh, when I first started growing, I bought a kind LED, thought it was gonna be all the shit. But now I'm just using HPS and they fucking work well. Wait, wait, let me, let, let's be clear. Let's be clear because kind makes a phenomenal LED. What I would like to point out is, why did you make the change? I just wanted more lights, and more grows, and do you mean the kind of LED just collects dust now? Physically, more lights. Like you want three, five, six lights? No, just more light spread. They work better. The HPS. Okay, and as you've gotten to be a better grower. Is there an opinion between LEDs and HPS, or is it mostly the grower? Um, I think it's the grower, the way you use it. 
That's what I'm talking about. It's the grower. I refuse. I refuse to give control of my show to a producer until I know every aspect of my show. And I refuse to give credit to a light until a grower knows every aspect of a grow. Woo, hey dude, thanks for the call. Hey, hey. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, there are just certain things that, listen, if you're going to be a master grower, it's you're the man, right? You're the man. You have to go to the facility. You have to know the equipment. You have to know the plants. You have to know all of the details to make a decision before you move forward with an action. So all I'm suggesting is that in the grower world, I don't care what lights you use. That's why I reversed my stance on, on everything works. I don't even want to go back over what I used to say. I don't even, but you do know what I used to say. I don't even want to go back over what I used to say. I just want to point this out. Tall bud's the same. All the tools on my ambulance were the same. All the tools when I went to fix computers were the same. All the tools when I go to fix cars were the same. Literally the Dylan 650 press I had loaded 30 different kinds of ammunition. Same press. That's why I always tell you guys, we need to focus less on the advertising. There, Ralphie, there are a lot, bad dog. There are a lot of products on the shelves of my store. I could go skipping through them for you. It's the literally the most brilliant marketing ever. And those are all the best nutrients. Those are the best nutrients. They will blow your shit up. Um, and those are the best additives. And those are uh, the best. Bleh. Those are the best shirts. Those Grow Boss shirts. Those are the best trellises. <laughs> In my best magic mirror, I see the best trellises. The best trellises. And the best scissors, I think. And in my best magic mirror, I see the best nutrients they claim to be. And in my magic mirror, I see one soil that says it's better than the... <clears throat> Listen, it's not, my friends. It's great marketing. It's great marketing. I wish I did as good a job at marketing as all these people do. I'm the anti-marketing. They spend all that money on marketing. <laughs> I'm the one telling you it's all the same minerals. For three hours a week while I get high. Oh yeah, you good dog. Come here. Hi, come on. Superstar. I know. I know you're such a good dog. Anyway. I think it's time to get Ralph a treat. It's time to end the show. As always, I appreciate you guys listening to me. Let me listen listen to me rant about the business, going over hydro stories, what's going on with in the industry, and my hydro stories. And just remember, everybody is the best and will blow your shit up. I totally appreciate you watching. Thanks. <laughs>
Ah. All right, now I really got to start my day.